Wow, okay, that Beastars video I made blew up. I was expecting like maybe 93 views or something, but damn, thank you guys so much. So like I promised, and because so many of you guys wanted it, here it is, the Gosha video. Now before I go any further, I just want to put a spoiler warning for chapter 84 and on. Anyway, let's begin. It was a cool September night. I was writing an essay for my Chinese class, and I was just trying to get it done as fast as I could because it was late and I had to wake up very early the next morning to go on a college tour. Once I finished the essay, it was around 11 o'clock at night, and I knew I should go to bed. But at the same time, I had the urge to read Beastars. I brought up Mangabat.com and clicked on chapter 84. There was a pretty intense fight between Lugosi and Ritz in the shower, and towards the end of the chapter, Lugosi begins to think of his grandpa, and then the last panel is just this. Uh, um... I think all of us expected Lugosi's grandpa to be some old wolf guy or something. Not a fucking kimono dragon! Like, how- what- it, why?! I remember reading the comments on that chapter. No one talked about how Ritz gave Lugosi a permanent scar on his face, or how Ritz tried to eat Lugosi. The reveal of Gosha was just such a huge shock that no one could talk about anything else. And then of course the next chapter starts with Lugosi telling Gosha that the reason why his mother took her own life is because of... I mean, well, we don't know what he said, but I'm very, very sure he said, you. After that, nothing. We get left hanging for 19 chapters, until chapter 103 hits and we learn the truth about Lugosi's lineage. The word of the day here is contentment, one being satisfied with their current situation. A word that, as an 18-year-old who is trying to get into college and get their career started, I can't exactly relate to. But I mean, that is normal. I haven't lived 53 to 54 years yet, so I haven't experienced enough to say that I'm fine with settling down and living the same boring schedule every day. So Gosha and Yafia, 17 and 15 at the time, were in line to become the next Beast Stars. They were visual aunties and took matters of the law into their own hands. Yafia with his 350 degree vision and Gosha with him covering Yafia's 10 degree blind spot and also his venom. They were an unstoppable crime fighting team. Partners forever. Well, that's what Yafia thought. One night, the two were on patrol and spotted someone getting attacked. They saved that person and she turned out to be a female gray wolf. When Gosha and her made eye contact, they knew there was a special connection between them. Gosha was set to be the next B star. But in a three-second glare, the course of his life was changed entirely. The two of them chatted the night away, and soon after, they began to see each other all the time. Six months passed, and, well... She's pregnant. With my baby. Huh? Whose baby? My baby. But, but Komodo dragons lay eggs, right? She can't be pregnant! The doctor said it was a miracle. A one out of five hundred chance. She's really happy about it. I have to support her. But... but it's probably going to be really dangerous to conceive. You're not even in a position where you can make a family to begin with. I thought... I thought we were going to become beast stars, the protectors of our society. I'm stepping down. I did want us to become beast stars, so we could fight for peace and coexistence. But now, I've found coexistence with someone I treasure more. In society. Wow, that was pretty powerful. It's just what happens after is, well, she dies. We don't know when or how yet, but yeah, she passes away. Who remains after her is her daughter Liano. Now, she is a gray wolf Komodo dragon hybrid, so how do you think she's going to look? Surprisingly, completely normal. Like, too normal. She looked exactly like a pure-blooded wolf, with absolutely no features from her Komodo dragon father. That was seen as for the best, because society would not shun her for being a hybrid. How society saw Liano mentally got to her. She became obsessed with how others perceived her looks. In order to fit in with society, she had to completely take her father out of the picture when talking to other people. You really take after your mother. <laughs> I'm glad. Uh, so... Tomorrow's your first day of middle school, huh? Dad? Hmm? I think I'm gonna hide the fact that I'm the daughter of a kimono dragon. I love you, and I don't want to hurt you, but I'm starting to realize something. Society loves simple and beautiful animals, and that's the kind of animal I want to be. I'm not hurt. We can still pick the same food from the same bowl. 
The Komodo dragon's venom immunity of the mouth is the only thing you inherited from me. I'm happy for it. If we can still have dinner together, then that's good enough for me. Gosha just accepts the fact that his daughter has to hide him away from society. You would wonder if he has any objections, but from what we see from his later actions, it really does seem that he accepts his place in the world. Later on, Liana goes through a metamorphosis where she begins to take after her father. Scales grow on her back and her eyes begin to change. Because of how she looked, she decided to shut herself away from society. She eventually had a child because she wanted to give birth to someone who wouldn't suffer like she did. That child was Lugosi. When Lugosi was 12, her metamorphosis changed her so much that she decided to take her own life. Lugosi blamed Gosha for the death of his mother because Gosha was the one that gave her the genes. Lugosi never saw Gosha the same after that, and so he moved into a school dorm and didn't talk to him for five years. How did Gosha take this? Surprisingly, he was really laid back about it and understood Lugosi. As I was reading all this, I kept wondering to myself why Gosha is so okay with how terribly the world treats him. That's when it hit me. Lugosi and Louis were made to be foils of each other. Every trait that Lugosi possesses, Louis possesses the opposite. I applied that idea to Gosha and Yafia, and by how Yafia reacts towards Gosha's decisions and actions in general. It made me realize why Gosha is so easygoing. Yafia is stuck in the past, he can't let go of anything. While Gosha's foil to that trait is that he's able to let everything go and learns to move on with things. This leads to the idea of state of mind being what solely dictates one's happiness. Yafia is a rich elite who is at the top of society, but feels lonely and angry because he can't accept the fact that his partner took a different path in life. Gosha is a lower middle class construction worker whose wife and child are dead and the only family he has barely talks to him, yet he is still happy and positive because he knows how to let things go. I mean, there are some negatives to this. Gosha just kind of accepts his place in society, and being a poisonous carnivore with a grey wolf grandson, he doesn't exactly get treated the best. Animals are already discriminatory towards carnivores, but put that on top of the fact that he is a poisonous creature, it sets the stage for scenes that are eerily similar to a situation you would find in 1970s Alexandria, Virginia. I need to stop referencing this movie, what the heck. He created these rules for himself of things he can't do just so he could avoid discrimination. When Gosha wanted to take little Lugosi out to eat, he had to sit somewhere furthest from the entrance to stay out of sight. Hell, they weren't even allowed to use the restaurant's silverware. They weren't allowed in public baths or even public pools. When Lugosi tries to break Gosha's self-set, I was born this way so I deserve to get treated less than everybody else in society rules. Well, I mean it does work. But at the same time, something like this happens. Why is a toxic lizard sitting on one of the good tables? It's a full household timer. You ought to get out of here now before you turn this restaurant into a gas chamber. What? Let's move, Lugosi. Hey, Lugosi! I don't think I heard you right. Because it sounds like you think that Komodo dragons emit poison gas. Are you serious? What? Don't get smart with me, you little pup. You wanna fight? Sure, why not? Lugosi? I just wanna hold your hand and sleep. I always thought of him like this. Gosha has a policy of pacifism. He doesn't believe in starting fights when not necessary. Although, there is a second side to that rule. The strong are the ones who should uphold it. In Gosha's eyes, the weak are the ones who usually try to start fights over small and petty reasons. When one of the chickens tries to touch his grandson, Gosha unleashes his part 3 Joseph Joestar on them. Also, yeah, I should address the whole title of this video here, because Gosha gives off mega, mega part 3 and 4 Joseph Joestar vibes. I was discussing chapter 107 in a Beastars Discord server, and right when I mentioned Gosha in it, everyone was just spamming the words Joseph Joestar. So yeah, he does act like a senile old man, except not as senile as part 4 Joseph, but when he fights, that's definitely when he acts really, really similar to Part 3 Joseph. Stuff like, age doesn't hinder me from inflicting justice and, you know, stuff like that. So, hmm, no wonder why Gosha is my favorite character, because Joseph Joestar is my favorite Jojo. Anyway, we see Gosha use his Part 3 powers again when Yafia uses Lugosi for his personal work. Hmm, a character that has strong morals who attacks other characters who disagree with them? Hmm, that sounds really familiar, but you know, I can't put my finger on- Why are you bringing this up now? You've always been an arrogant little shit. 
You beat the shit out of males who piss you off even though you're a little virgin. You force your morals on everyone around you. And the only female you got your eyes on is a little bunny. Lugosi is still finding himself and isn't the best at controlling his violent and righteous impulses. Instead of turning Ritz into the cops, Lugosi instead challenges him to a duel to the death just so he can personally teach Ritz a lesson. That fight ended in some negatives for Lugosi, and all because he wanted to take things into his own hands. Gosha, on the other hand, is someone who has strong moral principles, but is responsible and reasonable with how he goes about enforcing them on other people. Notice how Gosha attacked the thugs in an alley where no one could see them, and he only attacked them because the thugs attacked Lugosi. It's shown that Gosha tries to avoid conflict when he can, but sometimes he could be a little overdramatic about it. When someone returns a towel that he dropped, he douses them in anti-venom solution. He's scared of his venom killing someone. He knows that many animals with venom can't live a normal and peaceful life, and he's just happy that he can. Yeah, he's a little too paranoid, but that's just the naivety that Lugosi inherited from him. On Saturdays, Gosha volunteers at a daycare for mixed species children, this could be seen as Gosha's inner need to take care of a child again. Well, that, and that he also wants to support these children and try to be there for them when he couldn't for Leono. But yeah, the last we've seen of Gosha, not counting the flashback in chapter 152, was him fighting off a horde of bats preying on the mixed species children. I would assume that obviously he's okay, but you know what would really, really be painful, Peruitagaki? If you kill off Gosha before his character arc hits its conclusion, I'm not talking about even now, I'm talking about even in the future, just finish his character arc, please. Gosha still needs to grow a backbone and learn that he does have a place in society and that he isn't beneath everyone else. I don't know what Itagaki has in store for Gosha in the future. I wonder if or how he'll get involved with the fight against Melon. Watch there be some crazy reveal that Melon was the one that killed Lugosi's grandma or something. Alright, anyway. <laughs> I feel like the arc should end with some form of reunification of Gosha and Yafia. I hope that Yafia learns to let things go and learns how to understand other people's point of views. I hope Gosha learns that he deserves to be treated like everyone else and that he is a normal person. I think we all figure that the series will end with Yafia stepping down and Lugosi and Louis will take his place as the new Beastars. The thing is, we don't know how our two protagonists will get there. We don't know who will do what, which characters will grow or fall. We know for a fact that there is more development for Gosha to come. Lugosi still wants to know more about his grandfather's past. Plus, I think there's some foreshadowing for future events that could happen. Oh, I was just protecting my grandson. I'm not going to fight for anything other than my family. Gosha has, and probably very much so, will still stay true to this statement. Because here's what happens one of the times that Lugosi does get hurt. From the face of a grandfather who's worried about his grandson, to the face of a Komodo dragon about to go on a berserk rage. Or is that still the face of a grandfather, Gosha? I see you're still able to release your aura, and here I thought you were too old for that now. Not if Lugosi's involved. You know nothing of familiar love. Love, huh? Sad to say, that's beyond my expertise. Ah! I'm much better at talking to you this way. <coughs> Hear me out, Gosha. I'm sorry for getting your grandson involved in my dangerous investigation. I was only going to have him help me for one night. I wanted to believe in the strength that he inherited from you. I just didn't think he would have let Melon go. I didn't even consider it as a possibility. I was too careless. That's exactly why I don't want him to fight anymore. Because he's inherited my blood. I have a feeling that there will come another time when Lugosi is in danger and Gosha has to step up to fight. I hope the arc ends with Lugosi and Gosha taking down Melon together. It would be great symbolism because the introduction of Melon starts with Lugosi questioning if his heritage is ethically correct. And if it were to end with Lugosi and Gosha fighting Melon, it would symbolize that Lugosi has become confident and proud in his mixed background. Time will only tell how the rest of the arc will play out, and I can't wait to see it. Finishing off, the next video I'm going to make is about Louis. He's probably the most complex character in the entire series, and yet he hasn't had much screen time this arc. So much so that I kind of forgot his relevance in it. So that's why I want to change that and make a whole video highlighting how excellent of a character that he is. So here's hoping to that he'll show up again super soon in this arc. So I want to thank the voice actors that helped me out with the comic dubs for this video. I had a lot of fun putting them together, 
and definitely expect more of them in my future videos. Speaking of the voice actors, there's one of them in particular that I very much want to highlight. Don's voice is such a phenomenal voice actor, yet he has such a little following and I want to change that. Go check out his YouTube channel and hit him up on Fiverr. Seriously, it will be so worth it. Anyway, thank you guys for watching and just thank you so much for everything. This channel blew up and I just want to keep on making content for you guys now because I'm glad that people really do like it. Anyway, I'll see you guys at the Louis video.